I thought things were ominous before. This is a whole new level. Hey everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. We are in the Eldritch Dimension, and surprisingly to me, Vanity's Emptiness seems to be working. So let me just take that off for a moment and let me show you what this place is kind of like without it. And this place is literally a gigantic maze, so you want to be marking your places. This is why I chose the Mana Blaster Flash instead of Blood Lamps, because Blood Lamps are made to be as unobtrusive as possible. I want this for markers, not for lighting. You can see my night vision's working fine. But yeah, this place is made of ancient stone. And you want to be careful when you mine ancient stone up, because just beyond it is just a portal to the nothingness, and touching that is death. So don't dig up the floor if you can avoid it. There's also these glyphs everywhere. Oh, let me get under that. Yep. Glyphed stone. And that stuff turns into knowledge fragments. There's this glowing crusted stone, which sounds kind of gross, but it's kind of like glowstone. Oh, yeah, here's our first new friend. These guys look a bit more solid now, don't they? Yeah. This is their home dimension. They aren't just astrally projecting. Oh. They get a runic shielding effect. And then you have these super zombies here. Shambling husks. They're pretty darn tough, and they turn into eldritch crabs. We have head crabs. Those guys drop ender pearls. They're a really good source of them, actually. And oh, there's so many traps and tricks. Let's mark the floor as well, just so I know that is kind of a main path. Yeah, I'm just going to be marking the right side of walls. Oh. There's glyph stones everywhere. You want to be careful of those. Those glyph stones kind of do things. Rune stone, yep. Oh yeah, and there's these strange crystals. These things are actually really useful because they turn into balanced shards. So yeah, the Eldritch Dimension is full of actually really good loot. But yeah, each of these runes do something. <laughs> Some of them shock you, some of them increase the amount of mob spawn in the area. Like, they will summon Shambling Husks or Eldritch Guardians. Oh, man. Hello? Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes those Eldritch Crabs will latch onto your head, and they will start constantly draining your health. Yep, and they spawn out of those gross holes in the walls. You have to kind of take care of those as you go. Oh, man. But really, the biggest hazard is getting lost. So it's a good thing I brought this blaster with me. But yeah, it forms up into rooms like this where you'll have many, many glyphs. Okay, I think I'm going to put Vanity's Emptiness back on. Because you've seen pretty much all the mob spawns. When I confirm that a... Uh, when I confirm that a corridor is empty, I like to block it off with three markers, just like that. And yeah, we've got these old urns. These actually usually spawn in dungeons on the overworld as well. We just break those. They're usually full of a couple of gold coins and other various stuff. Sometimes they drop a little bit of dungeon loot. Want to be very careful whenever you poke a hole in the ground. Best fill it in, you know? Let's get some. It's usually safe to mine out the ceiling. But yeah, I'm going to need some of this ancient stone for some recipes. And really, that's kind of all the features of, of the Eldritch Dimension. It is just a gigantic maze that I'm going to be wandering in for freaking hours. And it's full of hazards, none of which are too terrible, but 
they add up, you know? So you kind of have to... You don't consider this to be a a single thing. You have to kind of pack for a siege, you know? So you want to pack an infinite source of food, an infinite source of markers, and just be prepared for the grind. Oh, here's a good little bit of fun. These crusted over rooms. Yeah, they're full of crab spawners. And you just kind of have to clear them out or wall them off. Because sometimes, sometimes you actually have to dig through them in order to get... Like, you'll find that there's no other path. And the only way out is through. And you see it it can get a little bit hectic. Sometimes you just have to tank the hits and deal with the spawners, because they're actually quite fast spawners. But yeah, they tend to be full of balanced shards. So at least there's that for a reward. Okay, I think that's all of them. Now we can loot in peace. Oh yeah, I haven't tested the Mirror of Noms yet. Want to make sure it works across dimensions. So dupe. Yep. So I do indeed have an infinite supply of food. Hooray. Oh, here's a fun little thing. This is a little bit of taint. Yeah. So you know when you when you do alchemy and it, and you have leftover stuff and it makes the goo? If you have too much goo piling up, it eventually starts to turn into this. And uh, this stuff is nasty. It spreads like a disease. And it makes those mobs. And if I hold on to that tainted goo too long, it will eventually kind of dissolve in my inventory and hurt me and give me warp. And... Yep. If you stand on fibrous taint too long, you start to take damage. I don't think it can actually hurt me through my armor and runic shielding, but you see it's trying to. And this stuff is hard to clean up. Yeah. No tool is good for it. And the worst thing is that it changes the biome. You see, um, over here in the biome information, I'm in Eldritch BL, but now I'm in Tainted Land. And it's the fibrous taint that's making the Tainted Land. And so long as the biome is Tainted Land, the fibrous taint will eventually grow back, even if I were to go through and clean all of this up, it would just grow back because the biome itself is tainted. And this stuff will spread out and spread the biome. If you have a tainted land chunk that is chunk loaded, it will spread and spread and spread. The only way to get rid of it permanently is to have what's called ethereal bloom and a couple of other things. These things, um, they restore native biomes that have been corrupted by Thaumcraft biomes. So you know how we have those silverwood logs uh, that turn the biome into magical forest? They will turn the biome back to wasteland. They will turn tainted land back to regular, and those eerie nodes that I told you about, those sinister nodes that turn the biome to eerie biomes, which I might show off for you later, it, it will undo that as well. So that is the only way to permanently clean up taint. So yeah, when you're doing your early alchemy before you get a perfect system, you want to be very, very careful not to make too much goo. Ah, another little feature. Mind spider spawner. Yes. I have tracked them down to their homes. 
die, monster. You don't belong in this world. <laughs> there we go. Look at this. I found myself the boss room. Now, sadly, I can't access it just yet. I need to find the uh, the key for this ancient locking mechanism. Ooh. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run back to the portal and I'm going to mark the center of the floors along the way so that I know the path to this thing. And you'll see kind of how far I've had to come as I go here. This is probably going to take a minute or two. Let's see. Let's just do that so I can see where the turn is. Yes, I'm just holding down the right mouse button. That way. Just following the markers, keeping them on the left. Oops. And keep in mind, whenever you see a wall, that might be like a half an hour of exploration just in twisty corridors. Yeah, and generally, the closer to the start, the, like, like that entire corridor just off there, that was like an hour of exploration. So yeah, now all I need to do is follow the center line and I can find my way to the boss room anytime. Ooh. Seeing a bunch of, a small little cabal of Eldritch Guardians here. Yep. There we have it. The Ruined Tablet. Let me just clear out my inventory real quick. Yes. This is that key. And I think I actually need to scan it. It seems to be part of something larger. Well, let's run back and get that larger thing. There we are. Okay, so time for a boss. Soup. Ooh. <laughs> Neogtha the Grim. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, but figure. <laughs> so much runic shielding. Whoa. Oh shoot, you're... Oh, nope. Okay. I thought you were immune to everything but magic for a second there, but no. Yep. Notice that it was leaving things on the floor that are slowing and damaging me. Oh, and these rune stones are zappy. Ooh. Yep. Those bosses are a little bit lame. <laughs> but that gives us a primordial pearl. This. Ooh. This is used for the toppest of top tier magic for Thomcraft. Just on its own, if you put it inside of a node, it will give that node a little bit of each primal essence, V. Like it'll soup it up a little bit, but that is the worst possible use for it. It's used for high tier infusions, it's used for the best gear, it's used for um, a super duper melter that melts things into Essentia instantly. It is the rarest, the hardest to get, and the best 
thing. <laughs> now, if I wanted to get more of them, I would have to move to place down an Eldritch Obelisk a fair distance away from the first one. I would have to perform the opening the eye ritual all over again on it, which means I would have to get more Eldritch Eyes. And then I would have to traverse a whole new maze. Yeah. These things are a pain to get. And there's no other way to get them. Sometimes you'll get a thing that allows you to duplicate them, but that's not in this pack. So, uh, yeah, use them wisely. But you saw just by scanning it, I opened up probably a whole bunch of research. And I'm just going to look through the Thaumanomenom and see what my options are. And oh yes, that, that was almost definitely the quest, yes. Just by going to the Eldritch Dimension, we finished off this quest, well, which gives us some stuff. And ooh, the Primal Pearl. Ah, and now we actually have a quest to make that node manipulator I talked about. That's the whole reason I went there. Well, let's do that. Well, I know that, yeah, over here in the Eldritch tab, I got revelations in the Outer Lands. Your suspicions have been confirmed. This is not the home of the race you have come to call the Eldritch. This place is something else entirely, and you do not believe it exists in what you understand as being reality. It is as much a mental construct as a physical one, but what mind can contain this? You have been able to decipher only a small number of the symbols, but you are sure this place is a trap, a place to test visitors and weed out the weak. For what purpose? You are not sure. <laughs> oh yeah, and I thought, I thought I'd show you like the the Eldritch Epiphany itself. Uh, no, 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 the Eldritch Revelation. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the kind of stuff I've been writing in the in the Thaumonomicon lately. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, the Primal Crusher, the Advanced Alchemical Furnace. Yeah, I've got a ton of research to do now. So much research. Okay. So. I think this is everything it's going to need. This is an interesting little multi-block, this node manipulator here. It's kind of like an infusion altar, except it's made out of uh, ancient stone from the Eldritch Dimension, and it requires an aura node in it. Now, the book says energized aura node. The wiki says regular aura node. So I'm going to kind of try both. I have a node in a jar here. I can just a boop. And hopefully, yeah, look at that. So as far as I know, once my wand recharges a little bit, what I do is I feed it some V. Yeah. And if I feed it enough, once I have enough V to feed it, which it needs at least 75 and more works better, the node will gain a random aspect. Right now this is kind of a, a crappy node. It is a fading node. So hopefully it'll lose that fading and gain something better. Okay, there's 75 V. So do I just put the wand in there? Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a modified wand recharge pedestal, so it's sucking V out instead of putting it in. <laughs> oh, okay, it's it's sparking up. Something neat should happen. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's still fading, but it gained a little bit of Terra? Neat. 
So I'm going to try saving up my, my V, and I'm going to try feeding it a full one. A 100 V that the wand can supply going into it. Hmm, well it looks like it's no longer fading. It's normal. It's pale. That means its charge is slower than than usual, but it's normal. Okay, let's try it again. Let's just keep rolling the dice. Ah, oh, that looks like it turned it back to fading. I guess that's the disadvantage of a randomization focus. I'll keep rolling on this thing. Oh boy. Uh, while rolling the dice, I turned this node sinister. And um, it's now spawning furious zombies at night. These guys are actually kind of cool. Watch this. When you hurt them, they suddenly start to grow bigger. Uh, normally they grow they grow gigantic. Let's see if we can get another one. There we are. Hello. Yeah, look at you. He just grows bigger and bigger. I think he does more damage too. Normally they grow up to like three stories tall, but I guess it's being stubborn. Uh oh dear. Uh, hungry node is apparently a possibility. Um, okay, I can. I can fly fast enough to get away from it, but hope uh no, it it just it just ate part of the multi block. Oh dear. Oh dear, this is bad. This is bad. Well, um <laughs> Oops. Um Good thing I went a little bit away from my base. Well that was that was uh yeah. That was a thing. Well, that was a quest, and uh, the next quest is more or less building the same damn thing, just with some more stuff, and that'll that'll give us the ability to open a new portal to the Outer Lands at will with a fresh generated labyrinth. And you need that because each labyrinth is only going to contain one primordial pearl, so if you want to get multiple of them, Okay, well, I was hoping to get a growing node, which I've never used before, but I hear it's kind of like a fancy... Uh, okay, let's see if I can get the node manipulator. That's the most expensive part. Nope, the hungry node ate it. Yeah, you see, it. it's... Okay, I'm, I'm going to stand a little bit of ways away. And a little bit of ways away. Oh, dear. Yeah, I am... Okay, hands... Off the keyboard. Zip. Oh god, it's getting harder. It's getting faster. No. And then it hurts you. <laughs> and you have to fly away. <laughs> and if you don't have flight and speed, it it um yeah. Ugh. And only blocks with a blast resistance of obsidian or higher will not be sucked in by that. And actually, hungry nodes are are actually a good thing. I I remember we have another one near to the base, and I was excited about it until I found out about growing nodes, and I wanted to try those out. But I don't think I'm gonna make another one of those pedestals. It's it was actually a freaking expensive infusion. So let's just try to surround this thing. Yeah, you see, it's it's deconstructing the environment around it. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Nope. Would you? Oh God. <laughs> okay. In in into the hole. <laughs> Oh god, this is bad. Okay, distance, distance. There, third block. That's the hard part. Getting that initial base. 
now we can just do okay other side other side other side this is much harder than it looks I assure you okay and now And trust me, it's, well, I don't think I'm wearing my uber armor. I'm just, I'm just wearing fairly decent magical armor. <laughs> yeah, I, I put repair enchant on all of them, by the way, because you know that's expensive, fancy armor. Okay. <sighs> okay. That's the hungry node saved. <laughs> uh, it'll still suck me in, but I, I can't get close enough to be damaged by it. See? I can be I can be pressed up against it nice and snug. And I still have to fly away. <sighs> now, the nice thing about Hungry Nodes is that whatever they consume, they have a chance of gaining a point of aspect from it. So, if I were to, for example, get on side of this thing. There we go. And I actually need more obsidian because I want to build a little platform. No, I think I'm going to have to maybe do that from above. Well, I, I bet I could make a fence out of microblocks, because it should still have the same blast resistance even in microblocks form. There. That should give me... No, I can get into that. Yep. Okay, I need it to be a little bit lower than that. Nope, I still can't see it. Damn it. I guess that's acceptable. Yeah, you see how it has those points. Now, if I go and I get, say, a stack of crafting tables, and I believe it works best if you feed them through one at a time, just kind of toss them in, There, see its points are a little bit higher. That's because, and, and notice that it gained points in all of the primals, I think, because it breaks down things as they enter them. And crafting tables, uh, wool would work as well. Crafting tables, wool, they both contain uh, fabrico, that hammer and nails element that you see there. And one of the nice things about Fabrico is, when broken down, it can be broken down into any of the primal elements. So toss anything with Fabrico into a Hungry Node, and it can gain points in all of the primals, roughly equally, too. So if we invent some sort of automated system 
to feed this thing at a drip rate just thousands of Fabrico containing items, I think I would go with wool just because I have a spider essence farm and not a wood farm yet. Yeah, there, see? Gained a couple of points of each of those. And that is, that is permanent. That is just, that belongs to the hungry node. So first of all, let's, let's re-entomb that hungry node. Okay, there we go. Yep. And note that, uh, Note that so long as it's covered up in obsidian, its suction is not applying to other things. I think it uses the same code as a TNT explosion. So things that would stop a TNT explosion will stop hungry nodes. Next up, I'm going to dig down a little bit and I'm going to try and find my way back to my maintenance hatch. There we are, the pile of skulls. And I'm just going to run cable over there. Okay, now this is going to be somewhat of an interesting process. I'm going to put an ME interface here, going to give it a... I forgot the crafting card, that's okay. The range extends to here. Give it a crafting card, and I'm going to tell it to keep stock with just one piece of wool. And I think just on the side... On the side. Nope, I need to put a cable on that. Okay. <laughs> Hungry nodes, they are... They are <laughs> not friendly. <laughs> okay, okay. And then I can get under it. There, that should... And I'm going to tell that to accept wool, and I'm going to, well, yeah, place it as a block. That'll do. Okay. Because the hungry node will suck it up. And that should be working. And device online, places block. Okay, let's try places item. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. It's not an interface I want, it's an ME export bus, I think. Okay, I think this should do it. <sighs> okay, got an export bus. No? Oh, come on. Okay, maybe what I need on there is an import bus. Instead of a storage bus on the chest. That did it. Okay. And after a couple of moments, the hungry node should suck that in.
It is not, apparently. Okay. So instead, let's set this thing to drop mode. Oh, this is not easy. There we go. Yeah, if I stand too close, my magnet should catch it. See? So, what we have here is a export bus crafting clay into this chest and on that on a separate subnet gaining power <laughs> gaining power through a quartz fiber you can see how hellacious this was to construct <laughs> we have an emmy import bus and a formation plane dropping the wool Oh, man. Okay, freedom. Freedom. And that will just feed that hungry node. And eventually it will contain hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of V. 